you there. So you clicked on the Halo 5 Guardians review. Well, thank you very much. Today, we're going to go over how I, Chief, am the best, and the Covenant are the worst. On with the review. I, I can't go this way. I tried to warn you this was happening. I mean, how are you even supposed to bring them in? Ask politely. You're to return to infinity immediately. Negative infinity. I don't like it. 117, stand down. This is your one chance to come home peacefully. I have a job to do. So we are back with the official review for Halo 5 Guardians. It's been a while since the last game review, but you know, life and whatnot. And a few week, uh, a few weeks ago, we did the owl play to Halo 5 Guardians. And today, I want to go over my thoughts on the fifth game and how I kind of feel it's a little bit of an underrated game. I know people could sell Halo 5 the absolute worst game in the series. Wrong. The worst game in the series is the original version of Halo 2. That thing, in my opinion, now is unplayable. You want to play Halo 2? Play the Legendary Edition. That is the much superior product. They fixed like almost every problem in Halo 2 with that. But a lot of people hate Halo 5, and I I get where they're coming from. They did some things that weren't exactly popular. They did some deceitful market advertising. But ultimately, getting down into it, this is a really fun game. And so I boot up the game. And I always go into the options to see what I'm working with. Sometimes you get like... Uh, you know, special feature with, you know, graphics, and so I'm strolling through there, and this game on Xbox Series X gets, um, auto HDR implemented, which is really awesome, and so I just inadvertently, uh, hit the tab over the sound to turn off any subtitles, because I don't like playing games with subtitles, especially if I'm recording, and then... No. It can't be. Oh! <laughs> yeah. You can now motherfucking turn the music down and the voice audio up. It only took 15 fucking years. <laughs> So, like, automatically, this game is already on a good start with me. I can now fucking hear what they are saying when the music goes, Oh! It's just like, Halo 4, I mean, good gosh, there was a crucial need to know sense about what happened with the jackass captain del rio and to this day i have no fucking idea what that guy said because the music always kicks into volume 11 at that exact point and now you could fucking turn down the music Grr! i am so happy and angry at the same time because i'm so pissed that it took 15 fucking years to finally get a music select volume thing. Every other game done it for a decade. Except Halo. Until now. So, 343, thank you very much. So. I start the game. Gorgeous opening intro cinematic. A little confusing. And I land. And... I stop playing around and I go throw a grenade and what I have no idea what that was I hit the button and I normally throw a grenade with again oh. it, 
It can't be. But what? Oh my god! <laughs> you can now fucking aim down the sights on your gun. I just before you couldn't. The gun was just always here, like this. You you could never, and now you can aim down the sight on your gun in Halo 5. It is the most insane thing. I I mean, I feel like I'm having a stroke. Like that's another thing that 343 did. That's just like, oh my gosh, you guys are making this my favorite Halo game ever. Like I can now fucking aim down sights. There is a caveat to that. You you can't aim down the sights with every weapon sometimes. It's just like you zoom in a little bit and you see part of the gun, which sucks. But a lot of the weapons you can actually aim down the sights or through a scope, and it's amazing. And so I'm enjoying aiming down the sights with my pistol and I'm firing and I run out of ammo and I go to hit reload the the RB button and I throw a grenade. And I'm like that's weird. So I hit RB again, and I throw another grenade. It's like, okay, so L the left trigger is a grenade and roll, but the right bumper has always been reload on a Halo game. I mean, it... <sighs> it can't be. It can't be. I. <laughs> Again. For the first time in the Halo series, you can actually reload with X like every other fucking shooter since the beginning of gaming. <laughs> <laughs> like, I couldn't believe it. Like, three amazing moves in the first five minutes of the game. It's just like, like, this is amazing. This actually can play like a normal shooter now. <laughs> and so, I'm sorry with that long joke sequence, but I mean, like, just those three amazing things just automatically had Halo 5 off to a excellent start. And this game is beautiful. Just absolutely gorgeous. One of the most beautiful games I've ever seen on Xbox One. And still one of the most beautiful games on the Series X. Like, I would say Halo 5 is more gorgeous than Halo Infinite. In the campaign, I mean. Now, Grant, Halo Infinite's an open world. So, obviously... It, 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 they can put a little bit more power into the rendering of Halo 5. But there's some pretty big levels in Halo 5. More on that a little bit. So, I mean, this game is gorgeous. And on the Series X, you have auto HDR implemented, which is awesome. And it just makes the game pop that much more. And so, you know, going into this, I was a little confused. Because I played Halo 4 on the 360, I couldn't play Sparrow Ops because I didn't have internet at the time. And on the 360 version of Halo 4, it is online only for Sparrow Ops. On the Xbox One version, you can play Spawn Ops offline. But, so, I missed out why Halsey was a fugitive in that. Because at the beginning of Halo 5, I was a little confused, like, okay, what did I miss? Why is Halsey wanted? And, like, I played Halo 4... And going into Halo 5, I'm just kind of confused. And then come to find out that um, 343 decided you uh, needed to do a couple of things in uh, you know, to prep for Halo 5. So first, you need to read the comic book series Escalation. Uh, it introduces you to Holly, Tanaka, and Blue Team. And then you needed to read the book New Blood. That talks about Buck becoming a spawn. Yeah, Buck's back from ODST and he's a spawn now. And then you had to watch The Fall of Reach, 
which I did a review on, and that talks about the Origins of Blue Team and Spawn 2 program. Then you have to play Halo 2 Anniversary to see the opening cutscene of that, where Locke is a spawn, which I think they might have removed in an update. I'm not sure. And then you have to read the novel Hundreds in the Dog, which introduces you to Olympia Fowl. Fowl A. I have no idea who that is, and I've played Halo 5 twice. And then you have to watch the live action series Halo Nightfall, which introduces you to Locke when he was an Oni agent, which I have reviewed. Then you have to listen to the serial podcast Hunt the Truth, which is about Oni politics. And, you know, okay. And then you have to read the novel Last Light, which explores more of Blue Team. And then you have to watch the marketing campaign Hunter Hunted plus Bullet. And then you'll be able to follow Halo 5. One second. Yeah, like, look, I get having a tie-in marketing thing to, you know, like, bridge the gap between two games. But this is fucking horseshit, okay? You expect us to read three novels, a comic book, watch an animated and live action series, watch the entire marketing campaign, and listen to, I think it's two seasons of a serial podcast? Like, are you out of your fucking mind, 343? No one has that kind of time to spare, all right? If, you're, if I'm going from Halo 4, to Halo 5, I don't want to be fucking lost! <laughs> okay? <laughs> and then something that really pissed off people was the marketing campaign. Apparently, it was very dishonest, and it didn't advertise the game that we got. It advertised, like, a different story and a different game. I didn't really see any of those. All I saw was the one with Master Chief and Monk's Ropes. It was the teaser trailer for this, which... They didn't really have that scene in this one, so I don't know why they did that. But, I mean, like, honestly, I didn't really follow the Rocky campaign because I wasn't trying to get Xbox One at the time this game came out because I thought Xbox One is that system that only has, um, you know, games that you can only own once. You can't buy used games for it, and it's online only. So I was interested in Xbox One at that time. So, I wasn't exactly jaded by the marketing campaign for Halo 5. And one thing that people did not like was the new choice of villain. I will not spoil it here. But honestly, I kind of liked the new choice of villain. Did they execute perfectly? Maybe not. But I liked it because you had an established history with this character. You had an established story arc with this character and so you could go back and see when this character was good you could actually see iconic moments with this character and so seeing the fall of this character made it very impactful to me and it's like really that that's the villain now like wow okay i i'm invested i want to see where this goes and so i actually did like the choice of villain a lot of people hate it. I understand why people hate it. But honestly, I I think it was a bold move. And I would have liked to have seen it uh, play out with Halo Infinite. Another thing people didn't like was Spawn Lock. Now, I actually liked Spawn Lock. First thing I saw was Nightfall, so that's how I was introduced to him. And then I saw Halo 5 Guardian, or I played Halo 5 Guardians. And honestly, I enjoyed him. I think the reason why people didn't like Spawn Locke was because 343 was trying to set him up as the new lead for the entire series. And they were trying to like push Master Chief out. And you play as Spawn Locke through most of this game. Master Chief is more of a side character in this game. And you play through him sometimes, but you only play through him like a third of the game. Two thirds of the game, you're playing as Spawn Locke. And I think people didn't like that they tried replacing Chief. If they had just introduced Spawn Locke as a supporting character and then gave him a spin-off game and slowly built him up, 
probably people would have liked Spawn Lock as a replacement to Chief down the road. But just trying to ram him in as the new series lead, get rid of Chief, was not a good move. I don't think it was a good move, and ultimately, I think that's why people did not like Spawn Lock. I would like to see Spawn Lock again. I thought there was actually some likable qualities about the character. And then one more thing on the story, I like how they set up the ending. Basically, it was just like all of these characters are finally together and it's like, all right, next game is the final battle. And I kind of like that setup. Kind of refreshing, we didn't get that, but uh, that's for a later review. <laughs> now, in terms of gameplay, the developers actually introduced a couple of new elements that made Master Chief and Spawn Lock not feel like everyday grunts. And one of these is the Ground Pound and the Sprint Tackle. And essentially what this is, is when you sprint, yeah, you can sprint now in this game. Uh, when you go sprinting, after a few seconds, you're going like the supercharge mode and you can either break through specific walls which is really awesome or you can like do a charge attack on an enemy that usually will kill them depending on if they have full shields or not and then another really cool one is if you jump off like a ledge of something you can hold down either l3 or r3 i can't remember which one and you stay in the air suspended for a second and you can choose where you crown ground pound and you can create like this shockwave explosion that can take out enemies. It's really cool. And finally, you're kind of starting to feel like a super soldier. If they just added in the skull that let enemies go flying when you do a killing blow on them, this would have been mwah, like perfection in terms of gameplay. Now, for some weird reason, I don't know why they did this, but every time you start a new level, regardless of what equipment you have, you always get reset to your starting weapon from the previous level. So, and basically, Spawn Lock always starts off with the barrel rifle and a pistol. And Master Chief always starts off with the assault rifle and a pistol. No change in that. And you can end a level with, like, a drum magazine machine gun and a shotgun, and you could have like one of those turrets you're carrying and you're in the level a cutscene will play with that same character no time lapse and then when the next level begins with the same character no time lapse you start off with the bow rifle and the pistol and none of the other weapons it's like why that's so stupid if you had a time lapse fine that makes perfect sense it's like okay they left planet went to somewhere else went back to but the, 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 this is ridiculous. It, they basically did it where it's just magically you go back to your starting weapons at the start of every new level. And it's stupid. Something else I really liked was audio. Audio has been cleaned up quite a bit in this one. And like the sounds are a lot crisper, but like weapons have a lot more heft to it. And like they, they really pack a punch and I, I really like that they did a good job improving the sound quality of the weapons in this game over you know the original games and then going back to an earlier point there's some truly massive open areas in this game like there's this one level I swear like this thing felt like an open world level it's not open world it's just a really big freaking map but still like, there are some really big open levels, and the fact that they all look as gorgeous as they do is really impressive. Now, unfortunately, one thing I didn't like is after all these years, you still can't play multiplayer against bots, so I never touched the multiplayer. Uh, I'm not a multiplayer guy. I don't really do a lot of multiplayer stuff, so Halo multiplayer just never appealed to me, especially since it doesn't have bots. Call of Duty multiplayer... Yeah, because I can play that against bots. <laughs> and unfortunately, there's no spawn ops mode or even a survival mode or like a firefight mode. It's just campaign, multiplayer, 
that's it. And that's unfortunate. Uh, another thing that made no sense to me, I don't really have the ability to do couch co-op because I usually play games alone, but you have a game where every single level you go into a battle scenario with you and three other uniquely different Spartans. And this is the one game in the series where you cannot play couch co-op. It makes absolutely no sense. Like in previous games, like Halo 3, you'd play as Chief Master Chief and the Arbiter. But in other Halo games, it's just like four different Master Chiefs or two different Master Chiefs. It kind of breaks the immersion to the game. And in this, it's like you had the perfect non-immersion breaking element where everyone would get to play a member of Osiris team or Blue team. And what do you do? Yeah, no, you can do co-op online, but that's it. It's like, what? So, anyway, I really liked Halo 5. I know I'm a little alone on that because a lot of people hate Halo 5. They hate the story. They hate elements to the multiplayer. They hate so many aspects of it. Is this the best Halo game? No, I would not say that. I still feel like the first Halo game in terms of story is the best one. In terms of gameplay, I'd probably give it to Reach. But this is a lot of fun. I have a blast with it. I love the levels. I love. I really enjoyed the story. I would have liked to see a continuation to this story instead of what we got. And ultimately, I think if you're willing to give this a try and avoid the marketing campaign, you'll probably really enjoy Halo 5. Maybe not. This is an acquired taste again. So, anyway, my name is Christopher Carl with 11 hour reviews, and that will. One second. Be all.